In the session 4 of Java and Web methods as flow of control, we have tried to set two numbers using the method call. The link of that video is given in the video description below. In this video, we will try to swap two objects using the method call. In this program, we have two classes, the class add and the class main. Class main contains two static methods. One is the method swap and other one is the method main. The method main creates two objects of type add. And then after the method main is trying to swap two objects using the method called swap. We need to execute the class main because the class main contains the method main. The execution of the class main starts and the various JVM memory areas gets created. Two among them is heap and stack. JVM executes the method main. So the stack frame of the method main has been created on the stack area of the JVM memory. Location for the variable ARGS has been created in the stack frame of the method main. The variable ARGS contains address of something. What type of address is contained by the variable ARGS? We will see about it in the later sessions of Java and Wave. The next statement to execute is add a1 is equal to new add. So the reference variable a1 of type add has been created in the stack frame of the method main which contains an address, an address of newly created object. The default value of instance variables x and y of the object add is 0 and 0. In the next line again a new object will be created whose address will be stored into the reference variable a2. Again the default value of instance variables of that object is 0 and 0. After that we are assigning the value 1 to the instance variable x of an object whose address is stored into the reference variable a1. Since the reference variable a1 contains the address of this object so the instance variable x of this object updated to 1. And similarly instance variable y of this object has been updated to 2. In this line we have written two statements in the single line. But two statements are separated by the semicolon. We can do it in the Java program. We can write two or more than two statements in a single line separated by the semicolon. In the next line we have assigned the values 3 and 4 to the instance variables of an object whose address is stored into the reference variable a2. After that we are printing the values of instance variables of an object whose address is stored into the reference variable a1. So the values of instance variables of the object whose address is stored into the reference variable a1 is 1 and 2. Then after we are printing the values of the instance variables of an object whose address is stored into the reference variable a2. So the values of instance variables whose address is stored into the reference variable a2 is 3 and 4. After that we call the method swap. The stack frame of the method swap has been created on the stack area and the method main has to wait for the method swap to finish its execution. In the method swap we have two local variables of type add. So the two reference variables a1 and a2 has been created on the stack area of the method swap. The value is stored into the actual argument a1 has been copied into the formal argument a1. And the value is stored into the actual argument a2 has been copied into the formal argument a2. That's how the reference variable a1 of method swap contains the address of this object and the reference variable a2 of method swap contains the address of this object. A third reference variable of type add has been created in the method swap. After that whatever is stored into the reference variable a1 has been assigned to the reference variable a3. And whatever is stored into the reference variable a2 has been assigned into the reference variable a1. Then after whatever is stored into the reference variable a3 has been assigned to the reference variable a2. So that's how the contents of the reference variables a1 and a2 has been swapped. After swapping the two reference variables of the method swap, we are trying to print the corresponding instance variables. Printing a1.x prints the instance variable x of an object whose address is stored into the reference variable a1. And printing a1.y prints the instance variable y of an object whose address is stored into the reference variable a1. After that again we are printing a2.x and a2.y. The instance variables of an object whose address is stored into the reference variable a2 has been printed. So the method swap prints the values of instance variables according to whatever is stored into the reference variables of the method swap, not of the method main. After completing this statement, the execution of the method swap comes to an end and the stack frame of the method swap has been erased from the stack. The method main resumes itself. But look at here, nothing has been changed in the reference variables of the method main. So the reference variables a1 and a2 of the method main has not been swapped. That's how when we try to print a1.x and a1.y, it will print the same value that it has been printed in this line. It prints 1 and 2. 
because the reference variable a1 it still contains the address of this object and when we try to print the values of instance variables x and y of an object whose address is stored into the reference variable a2 then it will print 3 and 4 because the reference variable a2 contains the address of this object so the swapping of two objects using the method call is not effective in the method main let me try to execute this code practically open swap object.java and this is the code so this code will print in the following order first the code will print this statement in main before operation a1 is equal to a1.x a1.y then after it will print this statement in main before operation a2.x a2.y then after the swap method will be called and it will print this statement in swap before operation a1 is equal to a1.x and a1.y after that the program will print this statement in swap before operation a2 is equal to a2.x a2.y then after the values will be swapped after that this statement will execute in swap after operation a1 is equal to a1.x a1.y then after this statement will execute in swap after operation a2 is equal to a2.x a2.y after this line the method swap will finish its execution and the control comes to this statement after this statement the next statement to execute is this one the program needs to print in main after operation a1 is equal to a1.x a1.y so this printing will be for after the method called swap the last line to be printed by the program is in main after operation a2 is equal to a2.x a2.y so let me try to execute this code java c swap object dot java compiles fine then run it java main since the class name containing the method main is main it runs fine in printing in main before operation a1 is equal to 1 2 in main before operation a2 is equal to 3 4 in swap before operation a1 is equal to 1 2 in swap before operation a2 is equal to 3 4 now the swap operation occurs in the swap method so in swap after operation a1 is equal to 3 4 the swap has been done in the method in swap after operation a2 is equal to 1 2 but after the swap method comes to an end the change is not effected in the method main in the method main after operation the value of a1 is 1 2 you can see here before operation the value of a1 was 1 2 in main after operation the value of a2 is 3 4 and you can see here in main before operation the value of a2 was 3 4 so the swap because of the method call is not affected in the method main what to do if you want the method swap to actually affect the values in the method main let's open swap object.java once again and right here int i int i let me remove this reference variable and write here i is equal to a1.x a1.x is equal to a2.x and then write a2.x is equal to i Now the instance variables x of two objects whose addresses are stored into the reference variables a1 and a2 has been swapped. Similarly, we will do it for the instance variable y. Copy these three lines and paste it here. Right here i is equal to a1 dot y. a1 dot y is equal to a2 dot y. Now I am swapping the variable y of two objects whose addresses are stored into the reference variables a1 and a2. So a1.y is equal to a2.y. Then after write here a2.y is equal to i. So although the object references has not been swept in the method main, but the values of corresponding instance variables have been swept. So let me try to execute this code. Java C swap object dot Java. Compile is fine. Then run it Java main. It runs fine and see here now the changes have been affected. In main before operation a1 is equal to 1 2. In main after operation a1 is equal to 3 4. In main before operation a2 is equal to 3 4. In main after operation a2 is equal to 1 2. What happening here is the reference variables a1 and a2 has not been swapped. The reference variables a1 and a2 still contains the addresses of same object which they were containing before the method called swap. But in this case the corresponding instance variables of two objects has been swapped.
That's all for this video guys. Don't forget to like and share this video. Subscribe this channel if you are new and leave your valuable comments in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.